Good afternoon, everyone, and good afternoon to our Boley parents, our Boley staff, and definitely to our Boley students. Um, my name is LaTanya Leeks. I am the principal of Boley Elementary School located here at Fort Bragg. Um, and I wanted to take this opportunity to just have a sit down um, and to speak with you um, to our community um, about what we're going through at this particular time. I first want to uh, take an opportunity to just say thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to our parents for your patience. Um, your patience has been greatly appreciated during this time of transition. Um, I know that we've made some last minute adjustments and throughout that you have been nothing but patient. So uh, we thank you for your, your patience and your flexibility in that. Uh, to our teachers, I want to say to them, bravo, I really want to thank you for your resilience um, in what we've been able to accomplish in the last two and a half days. I can say that I couldn't be more proud as a principal and an administrator uh, to see our teachers jump completely outside of their comfort zone, outside of the box, and to do things completely different from the way that we've done them before. Uh, but we do it all for you. Um, and finally, I would like to just say thank you to the kids. Um, thanks for your flexibility, kids, because um, throughout it all, uh, you've been wonderful. Uh, you were very sad to leave us, and we were very sad to see you go. But to be perfectly honest, it's really about you. Um, this is your time. What we're doing right now with virtual learning, this is about your generation. This is your time to really shine. So when we think about it, uh, parents and teachers, what we're doing now is really built on that whole digital native idea. That's what our students are. They're digital natives. They know this content. They know how to navigate it. Um, they are very comfortable with it. It's us that has to learn how to adjust. So this is their time to shine, and we really want to give them that opportunity to do so. So thank you for that. Um, I do have a couple of bullet points that I would like to go through. This will not be a long session, um, but I do feel the need to just come to you live um, and give you all an opportunity to address some things for me. I can tell you now that I won't have all of the answers for you today, but I will try to do my best to give you information that I do have. Um, and for the most part, to just get you to a place where uh, you're with us, that you're calm, and you're ready to take on the ne next task. Um, so uh, if you would let me, um, allow me to just address a couple of bullet points. And if we do have questions that come up through the feed, I have Mr. Tamala, our fantastic and fabulous wizard of technology, uh, here with me to help me navigate through some of these questions. So you can post while um, this is rolling. Um, today, in uh, a text message and in a phone call, you received some information from me in regard to our new virtual learning uh, format uh, that was sent to you today. Uh, and you should be able to access all work um, and uh, all tasks and all information in regard to Boley on that link. So parents, please make sure you take time to navigate that um, and uh, have an understanding about what those priorities are. Our priority was to be able to provide work for students to be able to practice. So um, understand that we want you to pace yourselves. Um, please do not overwhelm yourselves. Do not overwhelm the students. Uh, take your time. Take your time with the work um, and understand that we want to see you engaged. Not that you're just popping in and out, but that you're engaged. And that means taking some time to really um, envelop the work. Um, and to take time to engage in some of the conversations. Um, that is the way that you show up. So Fridays are going to be very important. Um, at the end of the week, there will be some product that students might be able to turn in, some questions that might um, need to be answered, or some virtual learning sessions in which students really need to participate. Your child's participation in one of those ways is our way of being able to know that you're engaged and that you are attending. So by Friday, we will either be able to see where the student has turned in information, has either participated in a virtual learning session, or maybe answered some questions throughout the week. And that's how we, again, will be able to take ten attendance. So by the end of the week, we will be looking for one of those three ways in which your student has engaged us to determine whether or not he or she is participating and present for school. 
Um, so that's very non-traditional. We know, we understand, and we're also looking for further guidance that might be coming down from the district. But at this time, your child's engagement in one of those three ways is going to be the way that we look at how your child is attending. And if your child is not able to attend because you have an appointment or because the child is sick or you are sick and you're not able to log on, that just needs simple communication, which means uh, go to your email, email your teacher, uh, send a dojo, send out some type of communication to let the teacher know that at this time, um, your child is going to have to stay out because of one of those reasons. Um, and, and that's perfectly fine because life is going to continue to go on. We don't want you to stress it. Please pace yourselves because we understand that life is going on at your home. Okay, we don't want you to stress. Keep calm and pace yourselves. Okay. Um, we also want to talk about the difference between um, office hours and the virtual learning hours for teachers. So at Bowley, we have determined that uh, all staff will have office hours from 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock and from 2 o'clock until 3 o'clock. So office hours are those times when you would be able to uh, ask questions, get clarification on some things, um, try to see if you can um, set up maybe an, an appointment um, to be able to just have a face-to-face -face with the teacher through a Google Meet, anything like that. So those are what office hours were for. Just think that what you would do if you would walk into the teacher's classroom and you would have a sit down session. Those are office hours. The virtual learning hours are really for the kids. That's that time that the rich instruction will be happening, that kids will be meeting in whole group sessions, small group sessions. Sometime they might be meeting with a specialist to be able um, to get that instruction. So that's when the learning is taking place. So all of that information is located um, within that site that was sent to you earlier today. So when you navigate that site and you go into the grade levels uh, portfolio, you will be able to see when the office hours are and when the virtual um, learning hours are for those teachers, okay? So just wanted to make sure that we clarified what the differences are with uh, those two things. Um, many of you may have seen um, some communication in regard to Lunch for the Kids. Uh, we have three different sites um, that are going on. Bowley is one of the sites in which students can come and pick up um, a hot lunch. Uh, please know that uh, students um, 18 years of age and younger will be able to receive lunch. They don't have to be a bully student, um, but just simply a child. So uh, that is locating, located at the back of Bully, uh, near the loading dock in the very back of the school between 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock daily from Monday through Friday. So if you're interested in picking up lunch for your child, um, you can do that at Bowley. And again, don't park in the front. You'll need to go all the way to the back um, at the loading dock to be able to get that information. Um, communication is very key. Um, we're going to be communicating primarily through email. So please, please make certain that you are um, looking at those email addresses. Uh, feel free to contact us. We are looking to contact you um, possibly during office hours or uh, we will have at least 24 hours in which we'll get back in contact with you. Um, some of you uh, may try to call the front office. The front office is connected uh, to the administration's cell phone. So whenever you call the school at the 910-907-0202 number, you're going to uh, get me. Um, I'll be the one answering the phone. Uh, quite possibly Mr. Daffin will be answering the phone at times. Um, so that is one way to get in touch with the school. However, please make sure that you are looking at those email addresses. Um, teachers will have two, their government email address, and they will also have a student.dodia address. You can use either one of those um, to communicate and to um, try to get in touch with, with the teachers, but that is going to be key use those formats is, is really going to be key. Um, so please note too that we do run office hours uh, just like we did, do on a regular school day. Um, office hours will be from 7.30 until four o'clock. So there will be no phone calls taken after four o'clock 
on the school phone number. Um, and again, if you email us, we will get to you as quickly as we can. If not on the spot, then within 24 hours. But um, the school phone number is still functional. There may be some times when teachers are not available, and I can give you some instances. Um, if a teacher has an appointment, um, let's just say that they're having to take sick leave because they, they have a doctor's appointment or they have a personal matter that they have to attend to, they still have to submit leave. Um, and when they do that, there will be an out of office message that will be um, tagged onto the teacher's email, which will let you know that at that time the teacher will not be available um, and will also let students know that the teacher will not be available as well. Um, also, teachers might be called into a meeting, a meeting um, for a special education meeting, um, uh, an SST meeting, um, or a parent conference. So again, if that parent um, or that, that teacher is not available, there will be an out of office message that will be placed on that teacher's email to let you know that that person is not available. So we'll do our best to communicate with you, but for the most part, we are still working our regular workday hours. Um, also know that um, you will not only be communicating with your child's teacher, but our support staff is with you too. We have a plethora of um, educational aides, reading specialists, math specialists, um, advanced academic program specialists, um, English as a second language teachers, guidance counselors, school psychologists, um, you name it, we have lots of individuals who can intervene and provide support for you. So don't feel like you have to have all of the answers. That's what we are here for. So please, please reach out to us, let us know, email us. We're waiting to help you. So uh, we have a, a very large staff here. Um, they are ready and waiting to do a Google Meet so that they can see you online, so that they can talk to you, and to provide that small group support or provide that tutoring that might be needed at the time. Again, this is not all on your shoulders. We are here for you the way that we would be if we were all encased in the building. Um, so please know that we have that support. Many of you did receive packets um, that might have gone home with students. Uh, those packets are supplemental uh, support for your kids um, to what we're doing with our virtual instruction. So again, it seems like quite a bit. However, just pace yourselves. Don't feel like you have to complete uh, every single thing on one day. You need to pace yourselves. We realize that many of you have multiple students in your household. Uh, there might not be many um, computer resources in the household, and teachers know that. So we are allowing um, that kind of flexibility. But again, the communication will be key. So if you find that there's something that's going on and you have an emergency or there's something that might be hindering your student from being able to get something done in a, um, as quickly uh, as you would want them to have it done, communicate with the teacher. Um, trust us, many of us have children at home as well and are going through the exact same thing that you are going through. So it is incumbent upon us to make sure that we provide uh, the kind of environment that we would want for ourselves as parents. So again, please know and understand that, that we, um, we get it. We totally get it. Finally, I just really want us to just take a breath. Um, there's a lot of information that's going on um, out in the world right now um, about our health and our safety. And we want to make sure that um, children have a level of awareness that does not make them afraid, but just makes them informed. And we want the same for our parents as well. We want to try to have all of the questions for you, but to be perfectly honest, no one has ever seen a situation or experienced a situation like this. So we're going with the flow. Um, but the one thing that we will do is we will always be that structure. Uh, there is absolutely positively no other environment that can take the place of what our teachers do for your kids on a daily basis. And I believe now parents um, are beginning to understand that. Um, we've got the best and the brightest that go into our buildings every single day. Um, so when that changes for our teachers, 
um, that becomes really frightening because we bond with your kids the way that you do. They're our babies too. Um, so for us, it is definitely a shift. It is a change. It is a tug at the heart uh, because we do miss our kids. Um, but for our kids, it is definitely a change too. And a lot of times they may need some support, uh, need someone that they can go to and talk to that will advocate for them. That's what we're here for. So understand that it's not just our teachers, um, our school psych, our, um, um, our guidance counselors, our SBH representatives, our MFLACs, those people are available to us. And so, and they're also available for you too. We are a family. And that is one of the things that makes Boley Elementary School a magical place. Uh, we do things the way that a family does things. So um, at this time, I want to yield over to Mr. Tamala to see if any of our parents have any questions so that we can uh, provide you all some answers. Okay, Ms. Leakes. Our first question was about the packets that were sent home on Monday. Yes. What do parents do with the packets once their children have completed the assignments? That is a great question. So when those packets are complete, we are going to ask that you hold on to those packets um, and we will designate a time in which those packets can be turned in. Um, again, we don't know how long we're going to be in this situation. So we don't wanna overwhelm you because again, there's the virtual learning instruction and then there are those packets. When the packets are completed, please make sure that you hold on to those and we will designate a date and a time that the packets can be turned in so that teachers can review it and give feedback to the students. So we'll provide a date within the next five days to let you know when those packets will be turned in. Okay, our next set of questions is about uh, devices. Um, some families are concerned that they don't have enough devices for their students. Um, and they were wondering what we were able to do to help them out with this. Okay, so we do realize that we run into those types of problems. Um, we, we would advertise if we could, if we had one-on-one -on -one, um, student to computer ratio here at the school, but we just do not have that kind of capacity. Um, we ask you if you would um, contact the teacher first, let them know what your situation is, um, and the teacher will provide you guidance. And that would be to more than likely contact the school. Um, if you contact the school, there might be some assistance, but again, we can't assist all families because we just don't have enough devices. But let your, your child's teacher know first. Um, they will contact me or Mr. Daffin, um, and then they will let you know um, how to reach out to the school so that if there are some devices available, we can provide those for you. Okay, our next question was about the, the learning curriculum. Yes. Um, and it's kind of been answered in the comments, but I'm gonna let you put your take on it. Okay. And it was, uh, can our children do the curriculum online whenever they want to or only during certain hours? They can absolutely pace themselves. So yes, they can do it when um, the, the way that you have that set up. For them, they don't have to do it during those work hours. Please make sure that you pace yourselves on that. So it is self-paced. All right, um, our next question is about the free lunch pickup. Yes. Um, and they were asking if kids had to be in the car to be able to pick up lunch. In the comments, it was answered, no, students do not have to be in the car. Mm -hmm. But if you just wanna go over where can parents get more information about the school lunch program because it isn't just a bully? Absolutely. Um, the school lunch program is being um, provided um, by our food and nutritional department. Um, Mr. John McKnight is the sponsor for that particular program. And um, I, I don't think that you have to have the students in the car. However, there is a number that is available. Um, for you to call and we'll make sure that that number is um, within the comments so that you can get that clarification so that you don't make a trip out here and need to change it. But to my understanding, um, as long as you have a child that's 18 or under, 
um, you can pick up a lunch for And we child. did post about the free lunch yesterday on our Facebook page and the phone number. The t there's two different phone numbers you can call. Yes. And they're both in there. Yes. So please make sure that you review that. Great question. All right. Is school still set to start back at the end of the month? Okay. So that's what we have right now. That is the guidance that we have. Uh, this information is all that we have at this point. Um, there will be an update given every Friday um, from the district on what the status is. So I'm going to ask that you please uh, take those emails and those ad hoc messages that come in very seriously um, as those updates, as we receive them, you receive them. Um, but as of right now, that's what we're looking at. Um, personally, I do believe that, that there may be some adjustments to it. But again, we do work at the pleasure of the command here on Fort Bragg, and that coordination comes through not only our DODEA um, uh, employees um, and leadership, but they have to coordinate that based on the, um, the command and what they say. But there's a, a, a possibility that that date will change. And so as we find out, we will make sure that parents are aware. Uh, Ms. Forbes actually wants to left us a comment. Okay. And she wanted to let parents know that if they have a gaming console like an Xbox or a PS4, uh -huh. um, most of them are able to log onto a browser and get to Google Classroom. Great. So with devices being short, sometimes they can actually use their gaming console to get to their assignments. Um, awesome. Now we have a uh, parent who want, who's deployed who wants me to ask if there will be translators for online learning, Facebook Live, and other meetings and calls that go home? Very good question. Um, so one of the things that we can do if you need to have uh, maybe face-to-face -face, uh, with a teacher, uh, but you do require a translator, uh, we will work with our staff to be able to provide that for you. Um, we will um, try to look for some opportunities to provide that communication um, in the language that you specify is uh, your first language. So again, please communicate that with the teacher. Do that first, and then we can always uh, provide a, a translator, an interpreter, uh, as needed once we find out that there is a need. But that is an excellent question, and we will work on getting that communication, the written communication in Spanish to you, as well okay and we have another um parent who wants to know with now with them having the telework at home they're working on the packets they're going to start working on the online stuff but it, it's, it's a lot of work with everything they still have to do at sure, home sure sure um and they just wanted to see if, if they are not able to get everything accomplished mm -hmm. will the students be penalized for incomplete work no no there will not be a penalty um so parents, please don't feel that that is going to be the case. Uh, we understand that we have um, families uh, that are having to share devices, and it is going to take time to get work done. Again, that communication to the teacher is key so that they can understand what the situation is. Our problems come when we don't have children who... Um, uh, participate in the virtual learning and also don't turn in work. When we don't get that engagement and that participation, we cannot guarantee that the child is present, which means that there probably is no learning happening and that's where we start running into problems. But again, communicate with the teacher first, but we are, do not want to penalize students um, because of, of this particular situation, but the communication is key. And uh, let's see, I think we just got another one. Is attendance documented by the day or by the week? It is being documented by the week because we do, again, realize that sometimes those virtual learning sessions, students might not have um, the device available for them to participate. So uh, when they are able to participate, uh, they can either uh, turn in an assignment. They can either answer questions or they can participate in a virtual session. That is the way that we are looking at the engagement. And we will look at that throughout the week to determine how students have engaged in the lessons to give students credit for attendance. Will there be paper copies of work made available for those students who struggle to maintain focus online? 
we will do the very best that we can. Um, we had teachers who came in today to do work, um, but our, our teachers have the option to telework. Um, right now, I'm at work as well because uh, using the internet at home for me was a little bit of a struggle. So uh, there might be some teachers who may use that as an option. Um, if that is the case, again, communicating with the teacher is going to be paramount so that we can go ahead and have that, uh, those packets made and make arrangements for them to be picked up. Um, it's going to be important that parents understand we don't have, we're not fully staffed, so there's no one at the front desk to be able to open doors uh, from 7.30 to 4 o'clock uh, because we are teleworking. So we have to work to make arrangements for someone to be there to give you access to those things. Communicate with the teachers so that we'll know how to be able to make those uh, materials available. All right, next we have a comment from Ms. Garcia. Uh, so far, we've had nine reading counts tests taken. Awesome. Now, students can't take reading counts tests directly at right. home right. because they have to be on Dodea premises to take them. Mm -hmm. However, uh, if you email Ms. Garcia, and I believe she has shared her email with each of the grade levels on their learning plans, yes. uh, if you email her, she will email your student the questions for the books they are reading. And then when you e email her back the answer, she will submit the test for the students. So just keep on doing that. We, we love to see that. Please keep on um, participating in those programs. We're still looking at how we can use our dojo to keep our kids um, participating in PAUSE. Uh, we're still using our reading counts and our SOAR sheets. We sent home lots and lots of books for the kids to read. So just depending on how um, long that this situation lasts, we're going to be looking at different benchmarks um, to determine um, when packets would need to be picked up, when packets will need to be dropped off, uh, if perhaps, um, you know, there could be time to do book exchanges, things of that nature. It's just that right now the situation changes so rapidly, it is very difficult to put those things in place. This is our first day, so we're learning from um, this whole entire event, but um, Please continue to participate in our programs. It's working, kids. All right. Uh, we have a comment that goes, if this goes past the end of the month, will we be figuring out specialty learning like speech therapy over the computer? Teletherapy will be made available. So that will be happening. Um, we will still provide teletherapy services for speech therapy, uh, for OT, um, and as much as we can PT. So yes. Teletherapy will be made available for students. Please make sure that you consult uh, via email uh, uh, Patricia Harwick, uh, Kino Hagen for speech um, and language services, Dr. Deborah Kratz for OT. Um, they will be the ones to let you know how you will be able to um, Google Meet or meet virtually to make sure that those services are being done. Okay. Um we have a comment that will oh, keep on trying to log into Think Central and it won't let, let me log in. It says the info is incorrect. Do I need to email my child's teacher? Yes, please email your child's teacher. Also, please use the Think Central link on the Bully Elementary page. If you just Google Think Central, you may get a page that looks exactly the same. However, it will not work. So make sure that you're going to the link on the Bully elementary page, and that you have Dodea selected as the district, Mid-Atlantic, and Boley Elementary as the school. Great question. Thank you. Uh, we have a question. Is, are the extra classes mandatory PE art music? Uh, it seems all a little overwhelming. It can be overwhelming. Um, we're going to make those lessons available for you. Um, we do uh, expect students to be able to participate, but again, it is about pacing um, and about that exposure. We don't want kids to lose skills, um, and we want them to be able to participate. Uh, we don't consider them extra classes because, you know, when the kids are here, these are the classes that they're expected to participate in and um, to earn grades. So please look at how you can pace those particular lessons. Um, they're different from some of our uh, more content-heavy classes, and they are a, a, a very good change in pace for the students and, and a lot of times very much needed. But if you find that you get overwhelmed, 
please reach out to the teachers and they'll be able to help you pace yourselves in order to get these lessons done. Uh, we have a question. Is Spring Central for kindergarten too? Um, and I will say that if it is not part of the learning plan that the teachers shared on that virtual learning website, you do not need to wor worry about it. Thank you. Yes. Um, We have a question, uh, more of a comment that um, we are confused as far as maintaining everything for multiple children. Will the teachers let us know if we have missed something that is important so we can try and find our best to find it and complete it? Our teachers are on it, doggone it. Uh, they are. Um, and what I'm trying to let them know is number one, don't overwhelm you with a lot of communication. Um, however, uh, I know that a lot of the teachers are taking time to uh, get caught up with parents right now. We're just wanting to give you time to get adjusted, uh, to understand what all of this is. Um, I'm asking them to make sure that they don't overwhelm you more than anything that they support you. But yes, uh, to answer your question, they are on it and they will let you know what you need to complete. Okay. Um, we're still having some questions about Think Central. Again, I'll say with Think Central, contact your teacher yes. and we'll, they'll help you work through it to get your student logged in. Uh, we have another question uh, that you answered earlier, but let's answer, answer it one more time for anyone who came in late. Okay. And then it's, uh, you know, with still, some of us are still working nine to five. Uh, do the assignments have to be done during the day as normal or can they be done in the evening? They can definitely be done in the evening. Um, this is a learning curve for all of us. And again, the reason why I wanted to come on Facebook Live today was to let you guys know that we, we, we understand, we get it. Um, I want you to keep calm about it. There is no expectation that work has to be done from this time to this time. We would never do that to you because every household is different. Every child is different. Every situation is different. Pace yourselves. That's why I wanted to come to you today. You need to know that we understand your situation because the majority of the staff is in the same situation that you're in. They're working also, and they're also supporting a child at home um, that you know is also in need of assistance. Do not feel obligated to get things done between certain hours. Get it done, pace yourselves the way that is going to work best for your family. All right, um, we have a question about uh, a student who has an IEP. Yes. Should parents contact the IEP teams to help figure out a plan for learning? Absolutely. So our teachers, um, all of our teachers are online um, and they have classes in small groups that are set up. So if you go ahead and navigate the pages, you will find the email addresses to those um, teachers and they will be able to set up those small group meetings um, to meet the needs of the students who have IEPs because the goals are going to be different for each student and for privacy uh, 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 for privacy purposes, um, they are going to want to meet with your kids, do some of that one-on-one, -on -one, do that support, do that tutoring with them, um, and also track the data that is needed to determine whether or not goals are being met. So please reach out to that special education teacher. Those email addresses are located within that virtual learning site. Okay, we have another question. Do we have to do both days of the virtual sessions? Some of them overlap. Um, no, you, 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 you don't have to, um, just depending on what those subject areas are, uh, and if it's within the same grade level, um, you don't have to do them if they're overlapping. Um, I would just suggest that you sort of look at the schedule and determine the times that will work best for you to be able to participate in some sessions. Um, and in order for you uh, to be able to learn the skills that are being taught, you definitely want to try to get into the beginning of the sessions. Um, but again, you do need to pace yourselves um, because there might be some overlap in some sessions. Um, but I would encourage you to try to uh, dip into sessions so that you can get information and you won't totally be lost. So, but again, it's about the pacing. Do not let it overwhelm you. And I would say if there are overlapping sessions, uh, reach out to the teachers yes. to let them know. Um, if it's a scheduling issue, sure. that's something that maybe can be adjusted, but, and they will let you know whether or not it's something that's, you know, going to be super important. 
communication is is key because they will collaborate with each other. They have been. These past two and a half days have been absolutely amazing for what our teachers have been able to accomplish. Um, they've been doing a lot of talking and a lot of sharing with each other. So if you let them know what's going on, they'll find a way to be able to make it happen for your kid. All right. I don't think that we have any more questions. Guys, this is my very first Facebook Live. I've not done this before. I was a little nervous, but it was just important for me to get in front of you um, and to let you know that we're here and we're not perfect at this. We're still learning how to do it, but I have to tell you, um, I am as proud as I can be as an instructional leader um, of my colleagues and of my staff that have participated in this with um, a lot of courage um, and a lot of flexibility. So thank you parents for tuning in today. I will try to do these at least once a week to give you updates on the things that I know um, and to provide you information that you need to know in order to help you prepare. Please make sure that you're reaching out constantly. We want you to stay safe. Um, we want you to keep calm and we want you to stay informed. So again, um, we thank you for tuning in here at the great Boley Elementary School where we are always ready for learning with high expectations for all. Thank you so much and enjoy your weekend.